Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of Able Maths. Here we're looking at integration using the trapezium rule, so we can answer questions from exercise 11i. Now the trapezium rule isn't really a method that you can use for integration, it will give you an approximate value to an area underneath the curve, but it isn't actually an integration technique. So in fact all it is really is it's just a formula to help us approximate an area under a curve, and only approximate, it's not even going to give us the exact value of the area under a curve. Now what we can do here is we could split the region into three strips and work out the area of each strip that we get. So in this case here, if we join the line from y0 to y1, from y1 to y2, y2 to y3, what you've effectively now got here is three trapeziums. That's why they call it the trapezium rule. And in this case here, we're going to be working out the areas of these trapeziums um, by using the formulas for the area of the trapezium. Now we're going to do this from scratch originally, initially, but eventually we're going to have a formula for it. Okay, so we connect the y coordinates together. Why do we call these y0, y1, y2 and y3? Well, this down here is the x0 coordinate, the x1 coordinate, the x2 coordinate, the x3 coordinate. And these are just the y coordinates that correspond to these x coordinates. So if we want to work out the um, area of each of these trapeziums, well, first of all, it would be much more accurate if we divided it into more trapeziums. Now, in this case here, we're just going to work with three and get a not very accurate solution. But if we want a more accurate solution, we'd have more trapeziums. Now, the first trapezium here is going to... Now, if you remember, the formula for the area of a trapezium goes a little bit like this. It's A times B, sorry, A plus B, uh, divided by 2, and then you times by the height of your trapezium. So it looks like A plus B divided by 2. Effectively, you're finding the average length of the width of this uh, rectangle here times by the height of this uh, trapezium here. That's why we give it a label of H in between each trapezium, because effectively that's going to be representing the height on the area of our trapezium formula. So it's going to be the average between y0 and y1, that's the average height that this graph is going to have, and then um, plus them together, divide it by 2 and times by the width of the bar. In this case here we're going to be labelling it with a h because that's the formula, that's what it's given to us in the formula. So it's a half h y0 plus y1. In the second one it's going to be a half h y1 plus y2, the average height between the y first coordinate and the second y coordinate. And then the last one is going to be um, a half h and then the average height between y2 and y3. And in this case here, what we're going to do now is add these results together. Now what we could do here, it does look like we could probably, probably simplify what we've got here. A half h exists in all three of these terms here, so we can factorise that out. And if we spot here, we've got two lots of y1 and two lots of y2, just a single y0 and a single y3, they're on the ends of the trapeziums, um, effectively because they're only contributing towards the area of one trapezium. This y1 um, coordinate here is contributing towards its left-hand trapezium and its right-hand trapezium, so that is counted twice. So what we're going to do then is we're going to group those two ones together, so it's going to be half h y0 plus two lots of y1 plus y2 plus the end one, y3. Now in the general case this is what it's going to look like. If you have lots of trapeziums where you have lots of these middle terms uh, that you have to add together then this is what it looks like. It's half h, always a half h, plus, sorry, times by the starting y value and the ending y value, add that onto two lots of all of the intermediate y values that you have throughout your um, area. Now what does this little bit here, you get this little bit on the end of the formula booklet as well, h is equal to b minus a divided by n, just to go back to b and a, what are b and a? a is the starting term and b is the end term, and then n, we've got three 
um, trapeziums here. So that's n equaling 3. And what we've got here is then h is equal to the difference between a and b divided by 3. So that's where this little extra bit of formula comes from. The height of each strip is given by the difference between its limits divided by n, where n is the number of strips. So that's where this little formula comes into it. Now, personally, I actually don't use this bit of the formula um, for the trapezium rule. It's obvious what h is to me. And I'll show you what I mean by it's obvious what h is when we get stuck inside a question. So, use four strips to estimate the area under the curve of this graph here, for x equals 0 to x equals 2. Uh, you will not need to do integration at all to do this, which is good because we don't yet know how to integrate a function like this. Um, what we do need to know how to do is to um, apply the formula. So this is our formula up here. Let's now look at applying it. We're dividing the difference between x equals 0 to x equal 2 into four strips. So that must have a difference of 0.5 each time. That to me, that seems obvious. I don't really need to use this formula here. It just does make sense. It makes sense that if I've got a difference between um, my x coordinates of 2 and I'm dividing it by four strips, it needs to be 0.5 each strip. And then what I do is I create a nice little table to hold all of my results. So I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to go up in 0.5s each time. This is effectively all of the x coordinates and on the bottom here we're going to substitute all of these x coordinates into the formula to get all of these really important y coordinates for our formula. So when I substitute in 0 I'm going to get square root of 3. When I substitute in 0 0.5, I'm going to get square root of 4. When I substitute in 1, I'm going to get square root of 5. When I substitute in 1.5, I'm going to get the square root of 6. When I substitute in 2, I'm going to get the square root of 7. Now, all of these y values here are going to be important for my formula. This first one here, that's y0. This second one here, that's y1. This one here is y2. This one here is y3. And this one at the top here is y4. This is the end one, so that's this one here in the formula. This one here is the starting one, so that one's going to be this one in the formula up here. And all of these in the middle are going to have to be doubled inside the formula. So the height of each strip h is 0 0.5. We can tell that that's obvious to us because it's obviously the difference in each of the x coordinates. We've got all of the values now. Let's just start to substitute them into the formula here. So it's going to equal a half of 0 0.5. H is obviously 0 0.5. The first value was 1.732, plus two lots of all of the values in the middle added up together, plus the last value at the end there. And then all we need to do is just type that into our calculators and we get a final answer. We can see how all of these bits are matching up when substituting into the formula. And we get a final answer here of 4.437 to three decimal places. Okay, so when you're using trapezium rule, you're not doing actually any integration. All you're doing here is substituting into a formula and it's really quite easy. The next thing we're going to do is repeat the same process, but now with eight strips. So this time, instead of it being a 0 0.5 difference each time between each of the strips, it's going to be a 0 0.25 difference between each of the strips. And as we do this, we're going to have a more accurate answer than we did have previously. So going up in 0 0.25 this time and substituting in each of these x values in and working out what the y coordinates need to be. Substituting it into the formula, now remember the first value that's on its own at the front, this last value that's on its own at the end, and every other value in the middle is going to be doubled inside a bracket. We're going to be halving the height, now the height here is just the width between the um, x coordinates, that's from 0 to 0 0.25, and it's the same difference throughout. And we type this all into our calculator, and we get a more accurate answer for this um, region under the um, 
y coordinate under the y equation. And we get a final answer here of 4.440 square units. So once again, it's just substituting into a formula. Let's have a look here and complete the table of values for um, this estimate here. So we've got sec of x is our integral here. So y is equal to sec x is our equation. And we're going to be substituting in these x values. Now doing this all on your calculator won't take you too long. If you can use the exact values, my recommendation is to use the exact value. For example, I'd use square root 2 here instead of 1.414. Um, I'll give you a more accurate answer. Now what we're going to do is now we're now going to find an approximate value for the region underneath the sec graph between 0 to pi by 3. The height of each strip, well what's the height of each strip? The height of each strip is the difference between each of the x-coordinates and throughout the whole of these x-coordinates here it's always pi by 12. So the height here is equal to pi by 12. That seems obvious to me. The height is actually the difference between the x-coordinates. You really don't need to use this formula here. Okay, so it's always that difference there. Label your y values if you want to, but all you need to remember is that the first one is not going to be doubled, the last one is not going to be doubled, and all of the ones in the middle are going to be in that doubling bracket. So it's a half of this h, remember, so it's half of pi by 12, so that's going to be pi by 24 on the outside there, and then it's going to be substituting in all of your values um, into the bracket, and being really careful here on your calculator, your approximate answer here is going to be 1.34. So once again, it's just a formula, making sure you're substituting it in exactly. Final question here, exactly the same as what we've been doing here. We've got a boundary in between 2 to 0, 4 strips. It's obvious to me that the height or the width between the x coordinates there is 0.5. So we're going to have a difference of 0.5 between each of the terms there. Notice here how if we're working out for 4 strips, we actually need 5 y coordinates. Reason being is that for the intermediate values, the second one, third one, fourth one, they're going to count for two trapeziums, but the end ones, they're only count for one trapezium each. So now what we need to do is substitute in 0, 0 0.51, 1.52 into the equation that we are integrating. So 0, 0 0.24, 0 0.84, 1.50, and 1.82, and substitute it into the trapezium rule formula. All you need to bear in mind is that the last value and the first value are not going to be doubled, all of the intermediate values between those two values there are going to be inside the doubling bracket. And remember, we need to half the boundary between the x-coordinates, um, so that's going to be 0.25 at the front there. Being really careful to type this into your calculator, you get a final answer of 1.745. Okay, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. Get your calculators ready because that's all you're really going to be needing to use. Pause the video and try this question out. Right, okay then. So substituting the x-coordinates into the um, tan function here and then plussing 1 to it and then square rooting it. And let's see what we get as our first answer. If we substitute in 0, we get 1. That's a nice easy one. The next thing I need to do is to now use my calculator to work out all of these tan, uh, all of these y coordinates. So the first one here is going to be pi by 12. And then I'm going to square root 1 plus tan answer. And in this case, I'm going to get an answer of 1.126. The next one is going to be um, pi by 6, so pi divided by 6, and then using the formula for above, I'm going to get 1.256 again. Uh, for pi by 4, pi by 4, go above, I'm going to get square root of 2, and in fact I'm going to keep that square root of 2 in there. The last one is going to be pi by 3. And using the answer from above, or the formula from above, 1.653.
Okay, so filled in the table, that didn't take too long. Next, I'm going to use the um, the trapezium rule formula here to now work out the area underneath this curve here, or at least an approximation for the area underneath this curve here. So you just need to remember that the first and the last terms are not going to be doubled, but the ones in the middle are going to be doubled. A good question would be, what is h? Well, h is just the difference between the x-coordinates, so that's going to be pi by 12. And then it's going to be y0, that's 1, plus 2, lots of all of the intermediate values, 1.126, plus 1.256, um, plus square root of 2. And then I'm going to add on the last value on its own. That doesn't get doubled. So bear with me. I'm just going to now type all of this into my calculator. So it's going to be pi by 24 times by 1 plus 2 lots of 1.126 plus 1.256 plus root 2. And close bracket on that, and then I'm going to add on the last one on its own, 1.653, and close bracket on that. So I get a final answer here of 1.34. That's my estimation for the area underneath, under this graph here. Now I think this here, if I work out, this is going to be an overestimate, because my graph is um, bending away from the... Uh, is, is underneath the trapezium lines there. So this, uh, this, this approximation here is going to be an under approximation. So that might be useful as some of the questions come up from exercise 11i. Now do make sure you have plenty of practice for this. This should be easy marks when you go into an exam because all you're doing is substituting into a formula. Um, have a go at the practice questions from exercise 11i, the exam style questions, the problem solving style questions, and do ask a teacher if you need any help on this. It is easy, but we need, really need to make sure that you know how to do this for an exam. Thanks for watching.